Hey everybody, Todd here. I just wanted to let everybody know I hope you're safe and staying healthy. God willing, we'll be through this coronavirus situation soon. In the meantime, we've rolled out a way to still do depositions. We're doing them remotely now via the free Zoom app. Many clients are already seeing the advantages of this because it can be done from anywhere and on any device. I've already done a podcast about it and started a resource library for it at www.toddolevis.com forward slash remote depositions. Check that out or give us a call at 888-566-0253. Okay, on to the podcast. I think most people think 99 as just a retail, but we're a hybrid of grocery as well. So we know we know that our communities are impacted right now with COVID and we're trying our best to be an assistance, you know, that fill that need for, for families. We're all shocked that we're even here. I mean, when it first went down, what were you feeling? Like it'd be like a couple of weeks or something like that? Yeah, I mean, things are changing daily, and then now it's weekly. I, I honestly thought it would be between two weeks, maybe a month max. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. And here we are, month two, going into month two and a half, you know, three. So Right. You know, I was, it was funny. I was just talking to my wife yesterday about it because I have a, a six-year-old who's in kindergarten. And so they, they told us, okay, uh, she goes to a charter school. So I said, we're going to close down until spring break. And after spring break, you guys will be back. And now it's like, oh, man, we've been her teachers for two months. Poor kid. Yep, <laughs> you know? yep, yep, yep. <laughs> what is your daily life like right now, Evelyn? Like, uh, you're in your, your home office today, right? Yes. Right now? Okay. And um, how's it going? It's actually going pretty good. I think just like everyone else, the first week or two was a transition, just everyone trying to find their own rhythm. Um, but communication is definitely key. I talk to my team daily, just checking in to see how everything's doing as far as their well-being and, and wow. claims. But for me personally, I still need to step out just for my own mental health for a yeah. walk or so. Yes. Because it's a di different atmosphere when before mm -hmm. all this happened, I guess I would be in the office, but for the most part, I was out um, about 60% of the time for mediations. Right. So I wasn't just in one spot every single day. Yeah. So nowadays, having that communication daily, electronically, is is sort of the best practice right now. Um, before this, were, were you able to work from home ever? Or, or, or is that... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had the flexibility. I just prefer to be in the office mm -hmm. because of my limited time there from being gone on court hearings or mediations. It was right, my right. the opportunity to just have some face-to-face -face time with my team. But yes, I, I'm able to work from home. Perfect. Yeah. Well, let's let's take everybody back. So you are with um, you're the liability claims litigation manager for a 99 cent only store. And uh, how long have you been in that position? I've been with the company. It's going to be five years this September. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's amazing. Yes. And uh, before that too, and I'm uh, peeking at your LinkedIn too, which has got a lot of your, your bio in here. You worked at some of my favorite restaurants on planet <laughs> earth. I think we've eaten at, my family's eaten at CPK more often than any other restaurant in the world. <laughs> so, and then after that BJ's. Um, so you have a, you have a long career in this in this profession, it seems like. Yeah, I've been in risk management since I would say about 2002, 2003. Oh, really? I actually started with 99 back in 2002, but mm -hmm. for the work comp side. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went with Coca Cola, which was a, a blend of workers comp and HR, HR role. Um, after that, that's when I branched out to the restaurant industry. And had the that's when I tapped into the general liability, and I kind of just stuck with that, preferred that line of coverage. Yeah, for you, why was that a better fit? Do you think it was a good change for me? Mm -hmm. And from there, the growth just started happening for me. It just it just interested me more than working with employees. Just um, you see a lot. You see a lot of vulnerability with with liability and exposure that the unexpected. It's there's more action needed when it comes to the liability side than than workers comp because they're not employees. You can't really communicate. It's kind of the unknown and expectation every day. Mm, that's and, true. I, and I like what you say about you know you pick your interest because I think that speaks a lot about you know being able to find something that you're passionate about that you know really kind of like lights up that fire every morning. 
Because I remember uh, when I started working my career, I used to work in banking and, you know, for a couple of different banks, I was able to work my way up to manager. But even though I thought it was my dream job, it was like every morning I'm like, oh, I can't believe mm-hmm. I'm going to do this all over again. And then yeah. you know, <clears throat> a different jump, you know, from banking, from years and years of banking to a core reporting agency. And it's like, wow, this is actually the perfect fit for me. This is like all my skills just kind of hone in and, and I just be able to, I'm able to find that passion, you know, like you said. Yeah. You really don't know until you jump into, into something new, whether you're going to like it or you don't. Mm-hmm. Well, clearly you've, you've found your niche cause you've been at 99 cent for five years and before that elsewhere for many years. Um, I like the idea of like going to work every day and like you use the word unexpected. It's like, it's, it's not Groundhog Day every day, and each file is going to have its unique characters, almost like a puzzle. Right. You feel that way? That they I have do. To solve it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though you, just like any other company, especially grocery or retail, you do have that, that frequency of slip and falls. Each slip and fall is completely different from the next, just depending mm-hmm. on, on that customer or that plaintiff. Right, right. So what is, um, what's on the horizon as far as like changes in the the service level or the for for the foreseeable future is this sort of the new normal like being able to check in with your teams through zoom and you know every day and work the files this way all remotely or are you still able to go to the office or will you soon be able to go to the office do you think um i still go to the office every so okay. often i would say maybe once every two weeks just mm-hmm. depending on yeah what I need to do. It's just easier for me there. Right. I do hope that things change mm-hmm. where we can all go to the office. I think it's just easier to collaborate in person versus Zoom, but it is a huge benefit to have virtual chats or yep. a yep. text, you know, a call, something just to connect. Mm-hmm. But as far as claims handling, you can do that anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not that's not slowing us down. What I do see, and I've seen that from other peers in the industry, is a decrease in file litigation. But that also has to do with the courts being closed at this time. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's great, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's kind of eerie what's going to happen once uh-huh. once um, everything yeah. goes back to the new normal. What's yeah. That's going to be for all those files which yeah is something like kind of what we have experienced because when when everything happened in march it was like kind of a lot of our workload just like everything just cancel then we right. start being pushed back and then push back a little bit more and now it's like <laughs> maybe in a couple of months there's just gonna be this giant wave of everything happening all at the same time everything that kind of froze during this this lockdown no, you're definitely right. And it's kind of hard to keep up when we're multi-state and every state is different and every county might be different depending on the venues. So the criteria is just, it's not one straight shot across the board. So we kind of have to stay on top of that. Mm-hmm. Take me through a, like a typical day nowadays. Like uh, t- today you're recording this <laughs> podcast with us right now, but like what would a normal pandemic closure day look like for you for Evelyn Romero? <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm, an, I'm always been an early bird. So I wake up early anyway. Like how early? Five, five what? In the morning. Are you serious? Five, five yeah. Who's up that early? <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Five, Do you have an alarm 30. clock to set or does your body just get up and can't sleep anymore? You know, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Before the pandemic, I had to set my alarm. Okay. And now I don't, and my body's just kind of used to it. So um, I wake up, take my time, and then I, I plug in probably around six thirty, seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I just, it, it's not a nine to five job. Sometimes I'm going to be finished around five o'clock. Sometimes I'm going to be working until eight o'clock. It just depends. Right. We do have um, conference calls set depending on the need for business meetings. Mm-hmm. And also depending on what projects we're collaborating with our teams. But for the most part, it's been... It's been, it's been doable. Yeah. 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 Well, you look well and you look like you're, you're have a real positive vibe about you. Just, oh, here you. we are in month two. Yeah. So yeah. obviously you're in this for the long haul and um, you're able to, to stay recharged somehow personally. So yeah. How do you stay recharged personally? Cause you, you know, working from home and never being able to leave almost, uh, you know, it, it drains on all of us. Um, do you have family around too? Or, yeah, it's just yeah. my husband and I, but I think it 
I think it just matters on the type of personality you are and yeah. how you're going to roll with whatever comes your way. Um, but I like to always have a healthy mindset. Like I said, I, I, yeah. I like to do my walks, which is why I wake up early. So I'll do something in the morning, you know, work for a few hours and take a break and go for a walk. But yeah. it's really how you're going to roll with whatever is landed on your plate. I mean, yeah. there are days where it may be a little chaotic, but that's just one compared to the next few days coming up. True. Yeah. And what city or what, what area do you live in? I you live in LA Whittier. Area? Whittier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you, are masks, um, like is it when, when you're out on your walks, is everybody wearing masks and stuff out in public? Um, some do, yeah. but everyone's keeping their distance. It's to me, I, I don't. If, yeah. if no one's near me, it's kind of hard to just kind of be comfortable with that mask on. But if yeah, I have to yeah. go to a store, uh, I sure. definitely have to put it on. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me. I, I do the same thing. There's a little trail that we have here by the house, and so I take my 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 daughter with me on, on walks sometimes. And you know, she's so excited to wear a mask just to you know get yeah. out. You know, and so but like, while you're walking, you don't have to have it on. Only when people right. cross. And I remember seeing this guy with some a massive pit bull just walking towards us, and she's like, "Daddy, he does not have a mask." <laughs> I'm like, "I see that. Just put yours on. It's fine." Yeah. And as he's walking by, she says, I can't believe how rude that sir didn't have a mask. And I'm like, that sir has a pit bull. And the pit bull's like, your daddy. You know? Yeah. Like, so I, I turn around, I want to apologize. And he just like, the sweetest guy, he goes like, I know, honey, I'm sorry. I left my mask, but I promise next time I'll wear it and he'll wear Aww. it pointing at his dog. And, you know, so it was a cute moment. That's but, cute. Yeah. She, and, you know, my mother-in-law has made a mask for her with flowers and stuff. So she's all about it. It's a fa- fashion statement for her. Right. <laughs> hey, you know, I've, I, we have um, adopted and we had never done this before. We, we've done a Zoom uh, internally for our for for us for TOA mm-hmm. um, every single day through this whole pandemic uh, we we n- I n- never even done a Zoom hardly before but now we've done one every single day we haven't missed one day as as a whole team and there's you know eleven twelve of us on that and um, I I found that surprisingly it has it's 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 kind of like a a, a new level of um, team teamwork that has that we've that we've risen to that we maybe wouldn't have had before and that we certainly didn't have this much consistency at have you right. experienced stuff like that with your teams that i've been fortunate with the team that i have right now that we're a close unit i always advocate how important it is to have that communication that genuine communication yeah. and mm-hmm. not just getting the support but being the support to others Mm-hmm. Um, I think that really forms and fosters relationship in the long run. And mm-hmm. I do see that people are becoming stronger in those areas, which is, which is needed. So I'm hoping that yeah. is a huge benefit once we all oh. go back to the office, because there's nothing more important than having that connection with your peers versus just a simple email. Hey, get this done. Yeah, that's true. Um, and plus if there's that big surge coming that, you know, once you're able to, and the courts reopen, and then all of a sudden yes. these filings get filed and then you guys are swamped. You're really going to need to <laughs> to have that teamwork and have each other's linked arms to be able to get through that giant tidal wave potentially, you know. Right. Um, I do receive communications from the private mediators offices uh, that they're going to be making changes. So I I, I know that they're going to have a blend of in-person mediations, mixing that up with, with virtual mediations. It's just easier. But I think it's kind of inter- – that, that part's easy. I just think it's interesting when they start doing the depositions mm-hmm. um, virtually. Yeah. yeah. I, I would think that we would benefit that in person. So we'll see how, we'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, most attorneys would obviously prefer to do it in person, I'm sure, because of the body language and being yes. there and the, the cues that are missed when it's electronic and stuff like that. But we've been really fortunate on our end to, that a lot of our clients have, ad, have adopted over and, and converted their previously in-person depots into remote ones, okay. either Zoom or WebEx. Um, and we've, we've got about 250 or so on, on, on our books now that have converted over that we would never have done before. Um, and so we're lucky. That's really what saved our bacon in a sense, you know? Um, so, and we'll see what, what the new normal will look like, how much of that, how much of those um, remote depots or how often re- remote depots will still be, you know, possible or doable by people's choice. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't mind, Todd, if you can tell me a little bit about yourself and yeah. your firm. 
Okay, sure. My name is Todd. Hi. <laughs> and uh, I am a, I started out as a court reporter. I, I'm a licensed court reporter for the state of California since uh, 1999, last century, actually. And um, so I'm 100 years old, <laughs> thousand years old. It feels like it. No, so I, I worked as a freelancer, freelance court reporting, doing depositions um, for a number of years, a couple of years. But then in uh, 2003, from nothing, from literally like a, a, a little one bedroom apartment behind an El Pollo Loco, um, I decided oh, I'm going to start a court reporting agency. Not that I thought that the world needed another court reporting agency because there was plenty already out there happily, you know, serving the community, uh, the legal community. Um, but I just had like this entrepreneurial spirit in me. And so that was 2003. And I just, I, I knew nothing. I, I went to like Kinko's, I think, and I printed up some cheapy little cards with a, a, my logo on it. I created a logo, you know, and uh, I wasn't, you know, I had... I don't know. I, I had a lot to learn. I had a big mountain to climb. And if I had known what the mountain was going to look like in advance, maybe I wouldn't have done it. But I'm, I'm glad that I've stuck, yeah. stuck to it all these years because um, we've grown. So we are a firm of um, about 11 or 12 of us now. And um, we supply court reporters throughout the state of California, um, northern, southern, central. Um, and um, the court reporters themselves are independent contractors. So we, we utilize maybe 120 to maybe 150 of them per year and um, on a job-by-job, as-needed basis. Um, okay. And so we, we, uh, we love what we do. And uh, I've got Jonathan. He's one of the marketing and um, client reps for us. And also got uh, John Castro and Rick Castro, two brothers, um, uh, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, all, along the way, we've added a couple extra f- cool things, too. One is we have this TOA University, which is our yearly conference. Um, and we luckily dodged a bullet this year in that our conference was right before the, the pandemic shutdown happened. So our conference was March 6th, and we held it at the Riverside Convention Center. And we had 300-plus RSVPs um, there. Um, and uh, we had a full day of... of um, it's it's a it's that's it that's a conference. So we are offered six EUs and lunch and mimosas and a band and all kinds of fun stuff for our clients. Um, you lucked out. We lucked out because yeah, we the were, very we next before. Last, yeah. yeah, we were the last event. You know, like the last seminar yes. that happened. It's true. Very true. Um, so and and we also have this podcast, the TOA Storytellers Podcast, which you will be our next guest on. And so nice. th- that's what we do. Okay. Yeah, thanks for asking all that. Nobody ever asked me <laughs> what we do. No, this is the I first time. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it's funny because I was thinking the same yeah. thing. I'm like, this is the first time they ask him that. Nobody. I'm We've like, done 40 nervous, podcasts. Todd. You're the first person who's ever asked me a question back. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm all nervous and flustered. <laughs> like, <laughs> Where's my need it to you now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back to you, Todd. <laughs> Turn the tables on me. Look how you did that. Only a liability claims and litigation manager would have turned the tables on me. I need to know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I know, I know. Man. Hey, so for, for people who want to get to your position and to your level, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe they're still climbing up the rungs of the ladder and stuff, or even in school, what would you say to those people, you know, to, to follow your, your path or your track to get, to get there? What are some tips that you'd give to that person? Um, definitely courses in finance. You're going to deal with a lot of numbers um, uh, as far as cost severity. You have to have a good judgment skill as far as finding trends and being able to f- find creative ways on how to ha- initiate pre- preventative measures um, mm-hmm. being put in place in companies. But at the same time, it, it is people skills. You are dealing with Customers or people in general that are injured, you have to be sympathetic, show empathy at the same time, being able to collaborate, not just with your peers within your organization, but external, whether it's judges, mediators, um, different attorneys, it's, it's a ton of collaboration. It's a ton of patience. Mm -hmm. Um, Not everyone is, is suitable for being able to relate bad information to those who are injured if if there's fraud or if you're not liable at the end of the day they're still injured Um, but as far as a career path someone who is able to deal with the inconsistency from day to day Mm -hmm. to have the patience and Uh, and being able to be organized 
Yeah. So if you, if you are a kind of person that must have the structure, then this might be a frustrating kind of job. Is that what you're saying? Because I it's, feel that it's out I'm, of the box I'm, thinking. It is out of the box. I feel mm. that I am a structured person, but at the same time, mm. you have to have a passion for people. Mm. Yeah, and I would imagine with having to injure people, it's like each person or each case that you have itself, it's, it's all these variables that are a ma- major part of your work day that it's outside of your control. You know, like right. You don't know how they're going to react and you don't know how they're going to take it. So you don't know who they're going to talk to. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, regardless of what structure you have in place, you know, when it comes to that portion of your job, the interaction, you know, there's no way to tell until you get to it. Right. Wow. Wow. So what are some of the typical injuries uh, and, you know, some of those underlying things that you face on those cases? Typical Slip injuries, and slips and falls. Yeah. Mostly. They're always slips and falls. I think the toughest part of my job is um, seeing the greed. Um, those that are being taken advantage of their plan as attorneys. I think that that's my struggle when their, their treatment is attorney driven. Maybe they're over treating and who knows how they're going to be in the long run with that excessive treatment. Mm-hmm. That's something that I do struggle with. That's obviously another thing that it's is out of my control. Yeah. Disappointing. Does that happen out of a hundred cases? How many do you think are over treating and sort of abusing the, um, it's hard to say. I would say mm. uh, as, far as, uh, as far as a percentage, I want to say at least 50%. Whoa, that much? W- like half? I, w- I would say half. Whoa. You, you can't, especially with HIPAA, it's not like you can really ask what's needed unless you get an IME on that, on that treatment. Mm. But it's, it's a good chunk, especially mm. in California. Wow. That's really disappointing then, I'm sure. It must be really super frustrating on your end, you know, to know half of these are exaggerated almost. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but. It might be exaggerated. I'm not mm. saying that the injuries are fraudulent. It, injuries right. do happen, but it's the, it's the aftermath. What's the treatment mm. plan thereafter, which mm. is why it's really important for my team and I to focus on injury prevention. Mm-hmm. And taking those steps to prevent from any of that happening on the front end of it, even before right. somebody, even before, yeah. Because what are some of those projects? If you can talk about those, um, I well, yeah, I'll give you some limited information. But for the most part, it's it's really advocating policies and practices we have in place mm-hmm. versus just having our associates follow a practice because it's a mandated policy. Take the time to explain to them, review what the important parts of are of that policy right. and when we heavily jumped into it we were able to lower our our frequency by 20 percent in one fiscal year oh nice mm-hmm. but it has that's a really lot good. to do with your, your partnership with everyone that's in operations it's not just hey let's do this here are the mm-hmm. reasons why let's work together mm-hmm. and the goal is to keep our, uh, our yeah. associates and our customers safe they're getting that buying from the associates you know it's like once they invest right. on it it's not just like well i have to do this because that's what the you know the big it's, it. yeah uh-huh. it's, right it's something that you believe in yeah because from their end it might be oh great another training or right. whatever you know what i mean roll their eyes but if they have buy-in on it then it's oh yeah this makes perfect sense this in your own home you wouldn't be standing on three ladders to get to the top <laughs> exactly. of your closet, right? You'd be careful. And so right. I think common sense. I'm always going to remember, I, uh, you know, I had a, a teacher, you know, once tell me, it's like, if you create the value that people can buy into, mm-hmm. then it's going to work. You know, the problem is when you, only you see the value in something and you're trying to force it onto someone else, it's, mm. it's doomed. But if you can just create that value that everybody else can buy into, then, you know, it will be successful. Whether it's, you know, a policy or a new change at the workplace or what, you know, whatnot. The importance is that value that you can just give to everybody else. Right. It's a really good point. Hey, how many 99 cent stores are there? How many branches? We were in four states. We're in California, Arizona, oh. Nevada, and Texas, and we have close to 400. Wow, well, that is a lot. Yeah. That's a, and you guys are obviously, we're never shut down, right? Because it was an essential business. It is an essential business. And it's kind of interesting how different counties, um, are, are strict on what items we can sell. Like what? Really? It's <laughs> <Yeah>. like random? <laughs> it's kind of random. Yeah. Okay. What's an example of that? Can you name one? Like, uh, Sure. I think one of the venues we can't, cannot sell school mm. supplies, but we can sell beer and wine. 
What? I know. You get pencils and uh, what, erasers? So, so Jonathan's daughter and- cannot buy school supplies. <laughs> they can go for a bottle of wine. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. The good thing I bought my pencils at Costco a couple months ago. So I have then a, you're good. A box. Yeah, like a lifetime. That's in bulk. Yeah. yeah. See, that is super random. Like, what is the it rationale is. behind that? I have no idea. You know I have some family that works on the beer business and beer distributors, and they told me that they're, they were deemed essential because beer has an expiration date. And so you okay. have to service it in the stores. Interesting. Yeah. So Interesting. all the merchandisers and all the distributors still have to work because there's a, a, an expiration date, even though it might not expire for six months. Yeah. Within the policy, you know, the county or the state, it says if it's an expiration date, it's essential. Okay. <laughs> so I guess that makes sense. I guess yeah, that falls Pencils under that. And erasers don't don't, don't expire. expire. No. <laughs> Education oh, does, but no big deal. <laughs> 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 and are, do you have the 99 cent store employees? They're all PPP or PPE out you know, with their mask and gloves or what? I haven't been in one since this all happened. We are definitely following protocol as, uh, you know, different mandates are, are being posted or sent yeah. out in communication. So we're, we're following as everything changes. Right. Wow. It's just a, it's a crazy time. Who would, who would have thought this would have happened like two and a half months ago, three months ago, right? Like had no clue. Had no clue it was going to evolve to this. Yeah. Do you, did you ever see The Walking Dead, any of those, you know, the zombie series? Um, Dead? Like an episode or two. Yeah, even if you didn't see the whole thing. But in, I remember the, the feeling that I got when I, fir- when I saw the first couple episodes of it, when they wake up in this hospital and then the whole world has gone to, to you know, hell in a handbasket and it's all weird now. It's all strange and it's you're disoriented that that feeling i felt watching that show has was how i felt in the early few weeks of this show yes. I was like whoa this is surreal like what's what's next you know like aliens right. coming down <laughs> take over yeah. our hornets remember oh, <laughs> the, yeah, the the murder hornets, hornets. Murder murder hornets. <laughs> you know I, I, it's like i remember like i think it was like four days into the lockdown i remember like waking up one morning looking at my wife and telling her there's not enough zombies in this apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I know. True. It's a way I was more promised zombies. zombies. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so true. Well, hey, what are you looking forward to, to get back, getting back to that, you know, kind of can't right now in your life? Um, my family, I miss, you know, our oh close friends, gosh. our close family. And, um, mm-hmm. my husband and are expecting our, our first child in August. Miss- so that's been kind of hard yeah. for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you, have you been able to go see your, my point you know? with my appointments? I have yeah, to go alone. Your- Unfortunately, my husband can't come with me. Um, and we had to cancel our baby shower, which is fine. But our yeah. family, our family friends have been amazing they've been very supportive with that but i just um that's the only part that is kind of a downer not being able to hang out with them did you say october or august august fourth. oh august okay coming Mm -hmm. up yeah okay so that's about three months from now uh we we should totally have less restrictions by then i I hope so right so you could have a shower of some kind still or just see somebody (laughs) other than just just us two yeah (laughs) What does your husband do for, does he, is he able to work from home too for his job? No, he, he has to go in. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah. But he's, um, they've downsized on who's, who's around. So they're mm-hmm. definitely also following just like any other company and following yeah. their, the mandated procedures or, um, policies that are being enforced, new policies every week. Yeah. 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 It's like, you gotta, uh, every week there's something new or different has changed, right? So. Yeah, that's it's hard to keep up with having to have that communication and work and just finishing a policy. Now you have to work on another one as yeah. things change for California. Yeah. Do you think that um, some of the changes that we've made uh, or that you guys have had to make during this pandemic shutdown um, that you'll carry over some of these things into the future, like uh, you know more working from home or more remote? communication and connection? I think so. As far as in store, we've just like any other company, we have practices in place to disinfect, to keep our stores clean. Um, But for our home office, Mm -hmm. I have a feeling things will change to where we have staggered schedules um, and redoing the layout of the office where there, there aren't, close cubicles side by side. So I do see the layout changing in that sense. Wow. 
it's going to be interesting how it all plays out um, right. in the next few months, right? You'll have a new baby on your hands. Oh, maybe you'll take some more time off and maybe at home some more. <laughs> right? Oh, jeez. Yeah, probably. <laughs> more. Take six months maternity. No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's one That's more cool. mix of your interactions. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's so amazing that right now, of course, there's pregnant p- women all over the place, but yeah. I just don't see any <laughs> right right here, you know. But uh, congratulations! And how are you feeling with it all? Um, I'm feeling sickness? great. No, yeah? no, I'm feeling great. Luckily, it's been it's I've had a good pregnancy so far. Yeah, because I I noticed you have like this glow oh, today. It's probably my makeup. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Put makeup on oh, today. Sure <laughs> on top of the. Underneath the makeup even was this certain like kind of glow. And it's like, that's awesome. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to you and your husband. Thank you. Well, um, I could just go on and on and on and just like chit chat all day, but I know, I know that you're busy and I want to let you re- respect your time and stuff. But, um, what did I miss? What, what, what would you like to, um, tell the, the listeners out there about how you're doing or how, what 99 cents stores only is doing or did I miss anything? No, I think, um, well, first of all, thank you just for in reaching out to me, inviting me for this podcast. I think this is, you know, a great way to just collaborate within our industry. Um, but one thing that I do see what, what I have been seeing for years and even so more so lately is our commitment to our communities mm-hmm. and trying to assist our communities as best as possible. I think most people think 99 as just a retail, but we're a hybrid of grocery as well. So we know we know that our communities are impacted right now with COVID and we're trying our best to be an assistance, you know, that fill that need for, for families. Yep. Yeah. So, such a time as this, you guys are, have stepped up as leaders and helped help the community and that community, that commitment to community is as a parent, I can, I can tell in you and every time I've ever been in a 99 cent store, it's like, I can tell this is, um, at, sort of at the, at, at the ground roots level of, you know, for you're there for people and, um, you guys have risen to the occasion and we'll all get through this very soon and we'll, bear, we'll be better off for it too. I believe with some new, you know, new skills, right. maybe more empathy, maybe, I don't know more patience with people yes, hopefully <laughs> collaborations <laughs> stuff like that all the things yeah. you mentioned so okay well evelyn romero thank you so much thank you for coming on the toa storytellers podcast i'll talk to you guys soon have okay. a good weekend Bye-bye. bye bye hey it's todd i just want to let you know this toa storytellers podcast episode is sponsored by my company todd olivas and associates We've been supplying court reporters for depositions since 2003. If you're an attorney and need a reporter anywhere in California, we've got you covered. We're on a lot of preferred vendor panels already, but if we're not on the ones you have, usually a simple inquiry from you to your TPA or employer does the trick. Or if you work at a TPA or employer, please ask your defense attorneys to give us a try on one of your files. We've been known to treat our clients like family, and we would love a chance to work with you next. To schedule a deposition, simply call... 888-566-0253 888-566-0253 or visit www.toddolivas.com that's www.toddolivas.com thank you and hopefully we'll see you at your next deposition